the original one? This is from 1968. It's been a great relationship. Great work. Actually, my partner Bob Vogel bought it and it, in uh, 67 or 68, I'm not sure really, but it's one of those years. And uh, I picked it up and started playing it. Uh, he played it for about a year and then he, he got himself another jazz master. So we, we love the jazz master, always did. We have a lot of pictures of just he and I playing the jazz master. So uh, anyway, this particular one, as you can see, I mean, this is just where my arm hits it here, and it's been worn down. So this has been through, through the mill. It, it, it used to be a beautiful guitar, and it's still a beautiful guitar, just in a different way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but this, this, if this could talk, boy, I'll tell you, it, it's a, it, it, I've been through the mill, <laughs> and it has. But it, I, I can tell you one thing about it. I have never had anything done to it. I mean, the, the people say, why don't you refret it? Why don't you, you know, do this? I never wanted to. And it plays it just the way I want it to play. And even some of these uh, um, fret wires have kind of little grooves in them where the string is hit. And it makes it so low, but still, if I play this without without an amplifier, it just sounds like, you know, nothing. But uh, once you plug it in, and I, it got to where it doesn't, uh, it doesn't uh, maintain the sound very long. I like that. It kind of cuts off, you know, uh, for my stuff I was playing. Well, this guitar is going into the uh, Rock and Roll uh, Hall of Fame Museum, along with uh, another jazz master, which uh, Bob Bogle has. That is, we had a, an album called The Colorful Ventures, and we're sitting there, Jiffy and I, we have both jazz masters, and the one that he has is from that time, which was probably 1961 or 62. So that's going to go in there. His jazz master and my jazz master. Well, the first guitars we bought were fancy guitars, of course. You know, we bought two guitars in a pawn shop. One was a, a, probably a Harmony and the other one was a Stella. You know, and you know, those days. And this is I, stuff, like I said, I knew. We probably paid, uh, I don't know, maybe fifteen dollars a piece for it or something. But then we went out on a, a limb before we ever got a hit record and bought uh, some Fender guitars. Mine was a broadcaster, the very first one I, I, I ever bought. And then, you know, the smaller one. And then uh, I traded that in on a uh, Jazz Master. And uh, the Jazz Master has a certain sound that no other guitar has. It really does. And uh, Walk Don't Run was played on a Jazz Master, the lead. And that, that sound is just so unique. And it, it's so warm and yet tough. So, yeah, there's no guitar like this. And there, there probably never will be. But anyway, the way we started with, with just two guitars, and we didn't know a bass player, we didn't know a drummer, so it was just Bob and I playing together. And uh, to make the sound more full, uh, I used to play very percussion-y rhythm. I mean, hit it real hard. And, and Bob used to play uh, melody notes and then sometimes with a chord to make that even, you know, a little more full. And uh, once we got a, a bass player and a, and a drummer, we, we maintained playing that way. I mean, it was just a natural thing for us. And I think that was kind of made our sound a little bit different. This, this guitar, this particular guitar is probably the biggest thing in my life as far as guitar is And there's no doubt about that. I, I love the jazz. Just absolutely love it.